Shalom, family. Shalom. It is your sister in Christ, Lady Summer, coming off of a beautiful Rosh Kadesh. Today is the 24th of May on our Gregorian calendar, but it is the 4th of Savan. Both of those numbers are very prophetic. 24 represents the kingdom priest, and 4 represents not only the physical creation, but it also represents God's appointed times or seasons. Also, the Hebrew word of the week, which ties into the whole message, which is why I'm so grateful to the Holy Spirit, is naso, N-A-S-O, to life, carry, or take. And it's taken from the weekly Torah portion, naso. The word appears in the second verse of the parasha, i.e., listen to this, Numbers 4.22. 422 is the day I had the dream of my mother being an angel of the presence. And the Lord spoke to Moses saying, take a census of the sons of Gershon. And again, that word Naso, N-A-S-O, comes from the Strong's 5375. The root word means to lift, to bear up, to carry or to take. Also, prince, leader, captain, princes, chiefs, leaders, load, burden, lifted, lifting, to take up, to lift up, married, also taken up. And all those words are what my message (laughs) is about. They're related words to what the message is about that he gave me. And this message started on May 22nd, May 22nd, (laughs) when I was 18 years old, was the date of prom night. And the theme for my prom was make it last forever. And my brother escorted me to the prom and I wore a yellow dress, which represents anointing. All these things are related. Just listen a little longer for the message. And I'll give you the title right now. The title of today's message is, I'm living my best life. I ain't going back and forth with you. That's the title of the message. Because the Lord told me it's time to come off the mountain. I'm not going to stop talking about. I'm not going to stop preaching about. I'm not going to stop living for the Lord Jesus Christ, who is God. So I had this dream of having to quickly get down the mountainside. And in the dream, I was dwelling in tents in twin cities. Now, those twin cities brought up Prince and St. Paul. Also, water and a water city, a river bank, a marsh area, a rock, coastal rocks. Again, leader, sun, air, northern, respected, honorable, tribute, sir, element, sand, Celtic, American, and Irish. All of which, including Gaelic, are part of my ancestry. The interesting thing about 522 um, in reference to earlier years like 2017, the year of the perfect planet alignment, the year of um, implementation, the next day I saw an angel rise up. So on 522-2017, the next day, 523, I saw an angel rise up. And I wrote on that day that the Lord told me, I'm going to bless you, but not here. And at that time, I was going to the building. And he told me to leave the building and go into the wilderness. That was two years later in 2019. In June of 2020, He told me I was on 
the mountaintop. I literally saw <laughs> in the sky a flying lion over my dwelling. And we were on a mountain. The clouds had shaped into where we were on a mountain. And I do have dreams, but I also have day and night visions. And they're very clear to me. And what I also wrote on that day is he takes us to a place of maturity so that we can handle what he gives us to make sure you can handle what you desire. And my desire was to know him, to search him out, to know true love, to understand his word, to not be alone, for him to communicate with me for the rest of my life. I desired to hear his voice. Then I wrote, God never starts a thing before he finishes. He completed the creation, the week, and made it start all over again. But he actually continued it, just like the Torah continues in the Bible. The Bible is a continuation of the Torah. The eighth day, which was a Sunday, was also the first day. So though it was the first day, it was also the eighth day because it was continuing. The count was continuing. Then I wrote seasons change. You have to learn how to shift with the season in a mental capacity. You are never too old to change. It's a process of relocation. The environment is not conducive. God can't bless you in your comfort zone. To be dependent in an uncomfortable place makes you totally dependent on God. And that's what happened to me in my wilderness experience. You know, I lost my job. You know, um, I was injured. Um, I was very uncertain about where my future was going because I had been working since I was 13 years old. That's all I really knew, you know. But what I didn't know is all along, it was the Lord. It was the Lord who was with me. He had never left me from the moment I was born. The next thing I wrote is process of isolation to establish relationship and covenant with you. He had to isolate me. He's removing people you are familiar with, run with, drink with, you used to worship with, codependent on people who don't have the power to deliver you. Your relationship with God cannot depend on someone else going to a building or not. He kept me. I clung to him. It was a process of separation. He disconnected me from stuff in my past to cancel generation curses transferred from house to house. I couldn't bring my past into my future. It was impossible to live in my destiny and live in my history. I couldn't live in the past. I couldn't hold on to the past going into my future. I couldn't have too many people at my table. I had to let some stuff go, especially the stuff and people in the past. I had to let it go. And then I had to ponder on the things that I learned from those situations. God said every relationship outside of your relationship with him is seasonal. And we know that anything you keep past a season is spoiled and toxic. And anything toxic can kill you. God shows you the promise, but not what you have to go through to get there. Keep in mind, I wrote this message down on 5-23-2017. And it came back to me again on March 7, 2022. God shows you the promise, but not what you have to go through to get there. He knows you. He disconnects you from your past and shows you a place you've never seen. God made a promise, 
and already prepared the place. Let there be light. There was light. When he saw the light, he said it was good. There was light before he said it because he saw it, because he said it. So he could approve what he spoke. You can have confidence in God because if he said it, he will do it. He keeps his promise to us. Now, this is so powerful because, again, this message was written on 5 22 and 23, 2017, the day that I saw the angel rise up over me. And exactly four months later, it was what was predicted the perfect planet alignment. And it was showing us the time, the season. It was also the Revelation 12 sign. And then what he would tell me in spring in 2018 was that all of my dreams was going to come true. He would be here. He showed me seven diamond stars. He showed me a school setting. And... (laughs) He showed me himself and I did not have any fear in that dream after he spoke to me and his name was said in the dream because my son said, mom, you'll be okay because you have Jesus. And in that dream, my dream had come true, (laughs) which is so amazing. But back to today's message, I'm living my best life. I ain't going back and forth with you. The opening scripture is, you are the salt of the earth. But if the salt have lost his savor, where would shall it be salted? It is thenceforth good for nothing but to be cast out and to be trodden underfoot of men. You are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick. And it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father, which is in heaven. Matthew 5, verse 13 through 16. And that's just the thing. My Father is in heaven. I have heard his voice. He told me to put on my marching boots. He told me in that same year that I was at war. And it was just as Kanye said in his song, Jesus walks. We at war. We at war with terrorism. We at war with racism. But most of all, we are at war with ourselves. And then the chorus says, Jesus walks. God, show me the way because the devil's trying to break me down. Jesus walks with me. And the song is so true. Like, <laughs> Prophetically, before his album, Jesus is King, even came out, the Lord was already speaking to him and letting him know. Because the Bible says that all sin can be forgiven except, except blaspheming the Holy Spirit, which is not believing that Jesus is the Son of God, that Jesus is Lord, that Jesus is King. Because If you don't believe the words that he spoke when he was here in the flesh, if you don't believe that he died and rose again on the third day, if you don't believe that he sent back his Holy Spirit, then you are powerless. Then you are without protection. You are without the Father God. You are without the angels and the spirits of the prophets. And you have no understanding of these scriptures that were written by my ancestors. And if that be such the case, 
then you are in darkness. Because if you're not led by the Holy Spirit, the word says, then you're led by darkness. You walk in darkness. And your king is Satan. That's the kingdom that you're a part of when you don't believe in Jesus. Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commandments. And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter that he may abide with you forever, even the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him. But you know him, for he dwelleth with you, and shall be in you. He said, I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you yet a little while and the world seeth me no more. I'm going to say that again. And the world seeth me no more. But you see me because I live. You shall live also. At that day you shall know that I am in my Father and ye in me and I in you. He that have my commandments and keepeth them, he it is that loveth me, and he that loveth me shall be loved of my Father, and I will love him and will manifest myself to him. Now Jesus saying, the world seeth me no more, is what prompted Judas Thomas to ask him, how is it that you will manifest yourself, show yourself to us and not the world? So the world sitting up here looking for Jesus, they're not going to ever see him. And that's scriptural because it's in second Esdras. And the father says it, you will not see my son again, except in the daytime with those that be with him. And he's talking about the clouds and the sun <laughs> because he's seated on his throne. He is the king forever. He is the royal high priest. And if the earth is his footstool, that means his foot is down here on the earth. And he definitely left a footprint. But the dream that I had on the 22nd of May, a couple of days ago, is what brought this message about on June 29, 2014, at 6.17 p.m., I wrote, Mountaintop Worship Experiences. And he said, Certainly I will be with thee, and this shall be a token unto thee, that I have sent thee. When thou hast brought forth the people out of Egypt, you shall serve God upon this mountain. When he gave me this message, I was actually hiking at Runyon Canyon in the Hollywood Hills. I had set a goal for myself to conquer this mountain. I said, I'm going to hike every single day for 30 days. And I actually accomplished my goal and even added two on to that. So I ended up hiking 32 times in 30 days. And I encountered many things on that mountain. A baby rattler, the most deadliest, yes, the most deadliest thing. I stepped over it. I survived a pit bull attack. I escaped coyotes at night. I literally almost slipped off of the side of the mountain on a hike portion of the mountain that we call Commando almost slipped off, but a stranger put out his hand to help me. See, God told Moses that when he led the people out of Egypt, he would worship God on that mountain. And that's what I was doing. When I was hiking, I was worshiping God. But then he told me, you have stayed long enough at this place. When I was almost done, he said, you have stayed long enough at this place. He gave me Deuteronomy 1.6.
And he said, but you can't stay in that place. You have to move on from the mountain. You need to be sent from a mountain so you can fulfill the plan God has for your life. Too often it becomes about the mountain, the temple, the songs, the video, and everything that it's not about. It's about God's presence. It's not about the moment. You're not supposed to worship, worship. See, it became about the mountain now. It wasn't ever about the mountain. It was about breathing. It was about living. It was about worshiping him and being in his presence and him being my source of strength, my source of everything. Because I'm going to tell you, the first time that I went to do that, it took me more than two and a half hours to do it. I was exhausted. I was over and done with it. I actually wanted them to like <laughs> come get me in a taxi, but they couldn't get up to this portion where I was. I had to hike to get out of there. I felt so defeated. And I said, that mountain is not going to get the best of me. I'm going to do this. <laughs> and I ended up cutting that two hours down at the end of the day to 45 to 52 minutes. And I felt amazing. And what it had done to my body was amazing. But that's not what it was about. God told me at that time, what's happening on the mountaintop is fueling you and equipping you now for what you need to do in the future so you can grab a hold of the promise he has for you see the promise of the father was the holy spirit and i was sealed with that promise the moment that i began to believe the gospel because that is what we're supposed to be living and preaching the gospel of jesus christ the reason that I know all of this is the Holy Spirit is because of the dates and times that these things come to me. If you notice in the Bible, they do reference the date when these things happened. Well, when the Lord told me that I had stayed long enough on that mountain, June 29, June 29 is the feast of St. Peter and Paul. See, it is said that they both died on the same day, June 29. This is when they celebrate, well, they say honor, in honor of their martyrdom. Listen, in Rome. In 2018, the Lord told me we have been transported back spiritually to Rome and Babylon. And it's either the anniversary of their death or the translation of their relics. And the translation of relics is the removal of holy objects from one place to another. Because, see, Peter and Paul, they were sent. Paul did not walk with Jesus. Paul was against Jesus and his followers. But Paul experienced the Holy Spirit after Jesus' death. Jesus came to him. Why Paul, even though Paul was doing these things that he shouldn't have been doing, Paul thought he was suffering for Christ. We're going to get into all of that. He thought he was. And just the opposite of that, Peter was walking with Christ, and he told him, I'll die for you, I'll do this and that, but he denied him three times. But Jesus still had given him the keys. He still went back to Peter and asked him to feed his lambs and his sheep. And he told him when he comes to himself, when he's converted, help his brethren. So now we're going to get into the message. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. 
That's Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2. Knowing the things that Peter and Paul experienced, and they wrote it down for us, and they were selected by Jesus for certain things, we should accept their word. See, that's the thing. We have the words of the prophets. We have the words of the disciples. We have the words of the apostles that were selected for their assignments. We have the book of Revelation. We have the testimony of the Johns. We have the testimony of the women. And now I have a testimony. Continuing in scripture, it says, Ye therefore, beloved, seeing you know these things before, beware lest you also, being led away with the error of the wicked, fall from your own steadfastness, but grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. To him be glory both now and forever. Amen. That's Second Peter 3, 17 and 18. And again, all these numbers for me are related to dates. And 317 was the beginning of that week in Nisan that the Lord spoke to me and told me we were in the halftime and the moon knows the season and the sun knows when to set. Matter of fact, I'm going to read the scripture he gave me that week. Bless the Lord, O my soul. O Lord, my God, thou art very great. Thou art clothed with honor and majesty, who coverest thyself with light as with a garment, who stretcheth out the heavens like a curtain, who layeth the beams of his chambers in the waters, who maketh the clouds his chariot, who walketh upon the wings of the wind, who maketh his angels spirits, his ministers a flaming fire. We are the fire. Matter of fact, my name means Jehovah's fire. Verse 5 says, Who laid the foundations of the earth that it should not be removed ever. So when people are telling you this earth, this world, this earth is going to pass away. Not the earth, not the earth. The world, the way we knew it, it's never going to be the same. Because Israel is no longer partially blind. Israel is not where they told you it is. Israel is not who they told you it is. It says, Thou coverest it, the earth, with the deep as with a garment. The water stood above the mountains. At thy rebuke they fled. At the voice of thy thunder they hasted away. They go up by the mountains. They go down by the valleys unto the place which thou hast founded for them. Thou hast set a bound that they may not pass over, that they turn not again to cover the earth. He sendeth the springs into the valleys, which run among the hills. They give drink to every beast of the field. The wild asses quench their thirst. By them shall the fowls of the heaven have their habitation. Where? <laughs> he sendeth the springs into the valleys which run among the hills. Then he says, By them shall the fowls of the heaven have their habitation, which sing among the branches. He watereth the hills from his chambers. The earth is satisfied with the fruit of thy works. He causeth the grass to grow for the cattle and herb for the service of man, that he may bring forth food out of the earth, and wine that maketh glad the heart of man, and oil to make his face to shine, 
and bread would strengthen it, man's heart. He showed me how those three sevens are the harvest festivals of Israel, the ones that they had to be in the presence of him, how it is the house of bread and the house of oil and the house of wine, the house of grapes, wheat, barley, the church of the lamb. You have to catch these things in the spirit. Verse 16, and I'm reading from Psalms 104. Verse 16 says, the trees of the Lord are full of sap. The cedars of Lebanon, which he have planted. These are white mountains where the birds make their nests. As for the stork, the fir trees are her house. The high hills are a refuge for the wild goats and the rocks for the conies. Listen, this is the verse he gave me. He appointed the moon for seasons. The sun knoweth his going down. And remember, we found out that the moon was not only a representation of Joseph's mother, but also it was white and light. It says, Thou makest darkness, and it is night, wherein all the beasts of the forest do creep forth. The young lions roar after their prey and seek their meat from God. Now, lionesses seek the prey. It says, The sun ariseth, they gather themselves together and lay them down in their dens. Man goeth forth unto his work and to his labor unto the evening. So there's a separation there. And then it says, O Lord, how manifold are thy works. In wisdom hast thou made them all. The earth is full of thy riches. So is this great and wide sea, wherein are things creeping innumerable, both small and great beasts. There go the ships. There is that Leviathan, whom thou hast made to play therein. These wait all upon thee, that thou mayest give them their meat in due season, that thou givest them, they gather, that thou givest them, they gather. Thou openest thine hand, they are filled with good. Thou hidest thy face, they are troubled. Thou takest away their breath, they die, and return to their dust. Thou sendest forth thy spirit, they are created, and thou renewest the face of the earth. I hope you can hear that with your spiritual ears. The glory of the Lord shall endure forever, because that's the regeneration. The Lord shall rejoice in his works. He looketh on the earth, and it trembleth. He toucheth the hills and they smoke. This is what's happening. This is this is not climate change. This is why you're seeing volcanoes. Because he's touching. He toucheth the hills and they smoke. He looketh on the earth and it trembles. It, that's why the, it's shaking. I will sing unto the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praise to my God while I have my being. My meditation of him shall be sweet. I will be glad in the Lord. That's why I said, I'm living my best life. Hey, I ain't going back and forth with you. I'm not. I have nothing to prove. <laughs> I know what he has spoken to me. I know all of the word is true. I know that there were mechanical writings removed that I have found and read that coincide with this word. It says, my meditation of him shall be sweet. I will be glad in the Lord. Let the sinners be consumed out of the earth. And let the wicked be no more. Bless thou the Lord, O my soul. Praise ye the Lord. And that brings me to the dream I had on the 22nd. I was up on a mountain dwelling in tents. And like I said, it was 
in a city. The city was on top of the mountain, on top of the hill. And I really couldn't see people, but I know that there were other presences there. It was a good time. And then I got sprayed with like these pheromones. It was like a mist over me and it was kind of giggly and laughing. And it's like the one who did it kind of went away. And then I felt something in my spirit that something was coming. And <laughs> this is the thing about what we're going to talk about with Paul and Peter, but specifically with St. Paul, because that's what came up with the city, Twin Cities, St. Paul. Not only did he preach Jesus, but he went to Iconium. And Iconium means coming. So in the dream, I felt like something was coming. I didn't know what it was. And I lifted up the bottom of the tent. And what I saw was a T-Rex. And it was just sniffing in a hurry, like sniffing on the street, coming straight in my direction, just with a quickness, just sniffing and with a quickness. Now, I didn't hear anybody screaming, running, none of that. But he was coming like with a quickness. And I looked to my left, to the west, and I saw a pathway just sliding down the mountain. And the Lord started talking to me. I had written this scripture on that day that he told me I had been on the mountain too long. It was time to move on from the mountain. And then he gave me this dream. It's time to get off the mountain. <laughs> and he took me back to 629, 14. St. Peter and Paul's feast day, but I had written this scripture and did not even realize. I wrote John 4, verse 19 through 26 on that day. Listen to what it says. The woman said unto him, Sir, I perceive that thou art a prophet. Our fathers worshiped in this mountain, and you say that in Jerusalem is the place where men ought to worship. Jesus said unto her, Woman, believe me, the hour cometh when you shall neither in this mountain nor yet at Jerusalem worship the Father. You worship, you know not what. We know what we worship, for salvation is of the Jews. But the hour cometh and now is when the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh, he's looking, he's looking for such to worship him. God is a spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. The woman said unto him, I know that Messiah cometh, which is called Christ. When he is come, he will tell us all things. Jesus said unto her, I that speak unto thee am he. See, he already came. The Messiah came and he told us, we would not see him again, but he would be in us because he's in the Father. And he said he was going to send another comforter, another helper, a comforter. He said he was going to send us the spirit of truth. That's why it's not biblical to say he's coming. He's going to be here any moment. No, he came. He's here. He said in John 15, verse 26, but when the comforter is come, whom I will send unto you from the Father, even the Spirit of truth, which proceeded from the Father, he shall testify of me. And ye also shall bear witness, because you have been with me from the beginning. This Bible is the testimony and witness of those disciples and the ones that Jesus has sent. This word is the truth. This is what people are doing. They're going to these buildings. And I just I just got to be in the presence. You are in his presence. If you believe. 
He's with you. He said he will not leave you comfortless. He will be with you. And he sent them. He sent the disciples. He sent the apostles. He sent Paul. Paul preached Jesus until death. And we're going to read about it. It's so many times I had to pray on that mountain. So many times. But I prayed on the way to the mountain. <laughs> I prayed in the car. I prayed when I got out. I prayed on the mountain. I prayed as I was leaving the mountain. I worshiped and thanked him as I was driving home. Because he's always with me. See, we were separated from the Father. But if you notice throughout all scripture, it said, the Lord said, the Lord God, the Lord spoke, the Lord told me. And 1 John 4 says in verse 6, we are of God. He that knoweth God heareth us. He that is not of God heareth not us. Hereby know we the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. If you're not preaching this word, and I'm not talking about being stuck in the Old Testament because we had a New Testament. We had a new covenant. What he was showing me was a life that reflects God's glory 24-7. Because the glory of the Father, we give him glory when we bow the knee and confess Jesus Christ as Lord. We give God, the Father, glory. And that's why the scripture says, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of the Father. And Jesus sent Paul. So what he showed me was the blessing of Isaac was given to Jacob. And what came from Jacob is behemoth and Leviathan. See, yesterday was the 47th Omer counting, four sevens. It was when, in history, the Jews prepared to receive the Torah. It was on Savan 3 that God instructed Moses to set boundaries for the people around, saying, Beware of ascending the mountain or touching its edge in preparation for the giving of the Torah on Mount Sinai three days later which the Torah was given on Savan 6. See, dates absolutely matter. And they're going by the Hebrew calendar. And see, that having to set boundaries and they couldn't ascend the mountain, go up or touch it because the Lord was going to come down. And, and to be in the presence of the Lord, you have to be holy. You have to be worshiping him. You have to be open to hearing from him. And this is what the Lord said. The Lord said unto Moses, go unto the people and sanctify them today and tomorrow and let them wash their clothes and be ready against the third day. For the third day, listen, the Lord will come down in the sight of all the people upon Mount Sinai. And thou shalt set bounds unto the people round about, saying, Take heed to yourselves, that you go not up into the mount, or touch the border of it. Whosoever toucheth the mount shall be surely put to death. There shall not a hand touch it, but he shall surely be stoned or shot through. Whether it be beast or man, it shall not.